Hi, beautiful friends and bookish fam. My name is Brittany. This is Rescues and Reads. Thank you so much for joining me here today. If you are new, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. And if you are a returning subscriber, as always, I appreciate your continued support. Thank you for returning to another video. Today, we are here to talk about some of the new releases coming out in January of 2024. January of 2024 is actually a very big month for releases. There are a lot coming out. I have about 15 new releases to talk to you about today, and that's not including some of the ones that will be featured in the upcoming book of the month prediction video. Now, a quick caveat here. I try to separate the new release video from the book of the month prediction as much as I can to avoid repetitiveness. And typically what I'll do is as I'm researching new releases for the month, I will try my best at the time to separate the books into what I want to feature in the prediction video versus what I want to feature in the new releases video. However, as you can imagine, preparing for Bookmas means I'm preparing for multiple different videos at once. And so as I was gaining all of the new releases for January, that's kind of what I was focusing on. And I'm still trying to kind of hammer down my book of the month predictions. I definitely have several on there already that will not be featured in this video, but some of these could end up trickling over to the book of the month prediction video. So I apologize for any redundancy. But anyway, as per usual, this list is not meant to be comprehensive. This is a list of new releases that have caught my attention, or I believe that will catch your attention. These again are all coming out in January of 2024 and I will either be reading the synopsis of the story or a blurb about the story to give you an idea of what they're about so that you can make an educated decision on whether or not you want to add them to your TBR. So without further ado let's go ahead and jump into the releases starting with the first Tuesday in January which actually is just January 2nd. The very first book that I have here is a book called First Lie Wins by Ashley Elston. Now Ashley Elston has actually written several young adult novels and I believe this is her adult debut which really intrigues me because I've actually read two of her YA novels and I really Really enjoyed both of them so I'm interested to see kind of like what she can do in the adult age range. This is supposed to be a suspense thriller. It says the identity comes first. Evie Porter. Once she's given a name and location by her mysterious boss Mr. Smith she learns everything there is to know about the town and the people in it. Then the mark. Ryan Summer. The last piece of the puzzle is the job. Evie isn't privy to Mr. Smith's real identity but she knows this job will be different. Ryan has gotten under her skin and she's starting to envision a different sort of life for herself but Evie can't make any mistakes especially after what happened last time because the one thing she's worked her entire life to keep clean. The one identity Identity she could always go back to. Her real identity just walked right into this town. Evie Porter must stay one step ahead of her past while making sure there's still a future in front of her. The stakes couldn't be higher, but then Evie has always liked a challenge. So it sounds like she's probably part of some covert operation. She changes her identity to whatever she needs to be, and now her real identity is actually at risk of kind of like being revealed, and so she's feeling threatened. That actually sounds very interesting. I am certainly intrigued. This is certainly one that will be put on my TBR for 2024. It looks like that was actually the only one that I wanted to discuss for the second. So moving right on into the ninth, we actually have the next book in the Wayward Children series by Shauna McGuire called Mislaid in Parts Unknown. I'm not going to be reading the synopsis of the story because this is obviously several books into that series. It's a very beloved series, kind of like of novellas. I know that they're very short. I personally have never read them. I have no interest in reading them, but I know that a lot of people really, really love them. So if you love this series and you are planning on continuing, just know that the newest release comes out on the ninth. Also on the ninth, another book I have no intentions of reading, but I know a lot of y'all love this series, The Atlas Complex which is the third in the Atlas 6 series by Olivia Blake. We already know by now how I feel about this series. I didn't love the Atlas 6. I DNF the Atlas Paradox and I've completely unhauled all of the versions of the books that I currently have. So I will not be continuing in this series. But like I said, I know that a lot of you actually really love it. So the third book is coming out in January. I think there might be one more if I'm not mistaken. I think that this was moved from a trilogy into four books, but I could be mistaken. But the third book is coming out on the 9th. And if you are not familiar, the Atlas 6 is touted as like a dark academia type story between very powerful magicians all competing for a space in the very prestigious Alexandrian society. And that was what the first book was about. If you enjoy the series and you are going to continue again, that comes out on the 9th of January. Also coming out on January 9th is a book called Northwoods by Amy Peace. This says, Eli North is not okay. His drinking is getting worse by the day. His emotional wounds after a deployment to Afghanistan are as raw as ever. His marriage and career are over and the only job he can hold down is with the local sheriff's department. And that's only because the sheriff is his mother and she's overwhelmed with small town shaky lakes, dwindling budget and the fallout from the opioid epidemic. The North Woods of Wisconsin may be a vacationer's paradise, but amidst the fishing trips and campfires and Paul Bunyan festivals, something sinister is taking shape. When the body of a teenage boy is found in the lake, it sets in motion an investigation that leads Eli to a wealthy enclave with a violent past, a pharmaceutical salesman, and a missing teenage girl. Soon Eli and his mother, along with a young FBI agent, are on the hunt for more than just a killer. If Eli solves the case, could he finally get the shot at redemption he so desperately needs, or will answers to this dark case elude him and continue to bring destruction to the North Woods? So I'm actually very intrigued by the premise of that. This sounds like it's going to be very very atmospheric which is certainly something that I love to see in thriller 
colors. This is set in like very small town, Wisconsin. It absolutely sounds like it's going to give me the atmospheric vibes that I'm looking for. So I think that this one is tentatively added to my TBR for 2024. Another one that's coming out on the 9th that seems very atmospheric as well is called The Waters by Bonnie Jo Campbell. And just based off of kind of the synopsis that I'm getting, it seems like it could be for fans of Where the Crawdads Sing, but I could be completely mistaken. It says, on an island in the great Massasauga Swamp, an area known as The Waters to the residents of nearby White Hart, Michigan, herbalist and eccentric Hermine herself Zook has healed the local women of their ailments for generations. As stubborn as her tonics are powerful, herself inspires reverence and fear in the people of White Hart and even in her own three estranged daughters. The youngest, the beautiful, inscrutable, and lazy Rose Thorne has left her own daughter, 11-year-old Dorothy Donkey Zook, to grow up wild. Donkey spends her days searching for truths in the lush landscape and her math books, waiting for her wayward mother and longing for a father, unaware of the family secrets, passionate love, and violent men will flood through the swamp and upend her idyllic childhood. Rage simmers below the surface of this divided community, and those on both sides of the divide have closed their doors against the enemy. The only bridge across the waters is Rose Thorn. With a ruthless and precise eye for the details of the physical world, Bonnie Jo Campbell presents an elegant antidote for the dark side of masculinity, celebrating the resilience of nature and the brutality and sweetness of rural life. So there definitely sounds like there's going to be a lot of natural elements to this, which again, reminds me of Where the Crawdads Sing. But it also sounds like there's definitely going to be a harder hitting literary aspect to this. This is kind of giving me vibes of a little bit of wayward, but also combined with maybe like Chris and Hannah. Those are the vibes that I'm getting from this story. So I'm actually really interested. I've never read anything by Bonnie Jo Campbell. I don't know if this is actually her debut novel or not, but this is certainly very intriguing. So I wanted to mention it here. Moving on into the 16th, we have a romance called Love Naturally by Sophie Sullivan. This says, Presley Ayers is not the woman you bring on a camping trip. An accomplished concierge at an exclusive hotel in Great Falls, Michigan, she knows more about the top 10 places for champagne and caviar than she does about the best hiking boots to go stomping around near Lake Michigan. But when she surprises her boyfriend of eight months with a vacation to the Get Lost Lodge and he dumps her instead, Presley decides to rough it solo and take the trip herself. When Beckett Keller helps the gorgeous woman off the rickety boat and onto Lodge territory, it's clear to him she's made a mistake. He doesn't like hiking, fishing, or nature in general, so why did she go on this trip? He's got other things on his mind though, a crumbling lodge and his own plans and dreams that are forever deferred. So he doesn't have time for Miss Fish out of water. Even so, neither Beckett nor Presley can help that inexplicable draw they feel towards each other. He's all rough stubble and plaid shirts, while she's all high heels and brand named athleisure wear. But you know what they say about opposites. So this definitely sounds like it's going to be an opposites attract, maybe even a little bit of grump and sunshine going on here. I'm not entirely sure, but I kind of like the vibes of this one. You have a very kind of a high maintenance city girl going into a rural area in Michigan in a lodge where she's kind of having to rough it just a little bit and she's not having a good time. And then she meets kind of the lodge owner and things progress from there. I just thought it sounded really sweet. So I wanted to mention it here. The final one that I'm going to mention for the 16th is a book called The Search Party by Hannah Rochelle. And it says it's for fans of Ruth Ware and Lucy Foley. So Max and Anne Kingsley have left the London rat race with their 12 year old son to set up a glamping site in the wilds of Cornwall. Eager for a dry run ahead of their opening, they invite three old university friends and their families for a long needed reunion. But the festivities soon go awry as tensions arise between the children and subsequently their parents. Explosive secrets come to light and a sudden storm moves in, cutting them off from help as one in the group disappears. Moving between the police investigation, a hospital room, and the catastrophic weekend, the search party is a propulsive and twisty destination thriller about the tenuous bonds of friendship and the lengths parents will go to protect their children. So we have a couple of things going on here. This definitely is like a locked room thing. There might be a little bit of isolation involved. There are going to be multiple perspectives. I am getting the sense that there could be a lot of characters to follow, which I don't necessarily love, but I am certainly getting vibes of the guest list by Lucy Foley in this. This could be one that I would be willing to check out, especially if I hear some good things about it. So again, this one is coming out on the 16th. And I will quickly interject to say y'all that there are some pretty big releases coming out in January and there are a lot of really notable thrillers that are coming out in January that I'm not mentioning in this video because I have a feeling that at least some of them could be potential thriller picks for book of the month. So definitely stay tuned for that video because there are certainly some notable books that I am not mentioning here. Moving on into the 23rd with another pretty interesting sounding thriller is The Clinic by Kate Quinn. Meg works for a casino in LA catching cheaters and popping a few too many pain pills to cope following a far different path than her sister Haley, a famous actress. Suddenly reports surface of Haley dying at the remote rehab facility where she had been forced to go to get her addiction under control. There are whispers of suicide but Meg can't believe it. She decides that the best way to find out what happened to her sister is to check in herself to investigate what really happened from the inside. Battling her own addictions and figuring out the truth will be much more difficult than she imagined. Far away from friends, family, and anyone could help her. From the critically acclaimed author of Black Widows comes a thriller set in a remote rehab clinic on the Pacific Northwest coast. Again, we have some common thriller tropes. There's definitely going to be a sense of isolation going on here. There's definitely a lot of atmosphere as it's set in the remote wilderness kind of of the Pacific Northwest. And I'm just digging the vibes here as this woman tries to figure out what actually happened to her sister while also kind of battling her own demons. I don't know if this means she's going to be an unreliable narrator. I certainly hope not, but it does mention here that she has her own like drug problem, her own addiction. 
questions that could lend to some unreliability. But again, this is another one that I have on my radar. I would be willing to pick up if I hear some really good things about it. Also coming out on the 23rd is Destroy the Day by Bridget Kemmerer, which is the third and I believe final book in her Defy the Night series. I read the first book, I want to say in 2021, and I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a strong start to a fantasy series. I absolutely love Bridget Kemmerer. Everything she does, I think is pretty strong and solid. I loved her Curse Breaker trilogy. So I'm definitely excited to continue in this series. I just haven't yet and I really shouldn't be letting it sit too long because then I'm going to lose interest and I'm not going to read it. But if you like this series and you plan on finishing it out, just know that the final book is coming out on the 23rd. This next one I'm mentioning purely for all of the Swifties out there because I believe that that is what this book is modeled over. It is called The Break of Tour. It is by Emily Wilberly and Austin Sigmund Broca, which are, I believe, two married people. It says Riley Wynn went from a promising singer-songwriter to a superstar overnight. Sound familiar? Thanks to her breakup song concept album and its unforgettable lead singer. When Riley's ex-husband claims the hit song is about him, she does something she hasn't in 10 years and calls Max Harcourt her college boyfriend and the real inspiration for the song of the summer. Max hasn't spoken to Riley since their relationship ended. He's content with managing the retirement home his family owns, but it's not the life filled with music he dreamed of. When Riley asks him to go public as her songwriting muse, he agrees on one condition. He'll join her band on tour. As they perform across the country, Max and Riley start to realize that while they hit some wrong notes in their past, their future could hold incredible things and their rekindled relationship will either last forever or go down in flames. For all of the Swifties out there who love a good rom-com, this is perfectly right up your alley and again it comes out on the 23rd. I know that this husband and wife duo have written several books in the past. I've never personally been interested in reading their stories but again I really wanted to mention this because I have a feeling it is going to appeal to all of the Swifties out there. I personally am not one of them but I did want to mention this here for you again coming out on the 23rd. And then the final book I'm going to be mentioning for the 23rd is the newest release from Emma Lord called The Getaway List. Yes this is a YA. She's very well known for her YA contemporaries. It says the day of her high school graduation Riley realizes two things. One that she has spent the last four years trying hard to be a good kid for her mom that she has no idea who she really is anymore and two she has no idea what she wants because of it. The solution? Pack her bags and move to New York for the summer where her childhood best friend Tom and co-creator of The Getaway List, a list of all of the adventures they wanted to do together since he moved away, will hopefully help her get in touch with her old adventurous self and pave the road to a new future. Riley isn't sure what to expect from Tom who has been distant since his famous mom's script writing career pulled him away but when Riley arrives in the city the reconnection is as effortless as it was when they were young except with one unexpected complication that will pull Riley's feelings in a direction she didn't know they could take. As she, Tom, and their newfound friends work their way through the delightfully chaotic items on the getaway list, Riley learns that sometimes the biggest adventure is not one you take, but one you feel in your heart. So it sounds like this might be bordering a little bit on YA and new adult as you have a recently graduated high school student who is now basically about to start the rest of her life. And it sounds like she's kind of going to New York to find herself a little bit. And I definitely feel that could appeal a lot to readers who are around that age. Like I said, Emma Lord is a pretty well-known, well-respected YA author. And that's why I wanted to mention this here because there are a lot of people who are a fan of her YA contemporaries. And if that is you, please keep your eye out for this newest release coming out on the 23rd. All right, then moving on to the last few, all coming out on the 30th, first starting with the newest release from Benjamin Stevenson called Everyone on This Train is a Suspect. He wrote a book called Everyone in My Family Has Killed Someone. And I'm really intrigued by that. It's on my TBR. I haven't been able to read it yet, but I'm really fascinated by the premise. And so when I saw he had a new release coming out, I wanted to check it out as well. It says, when the Australian Mystery Writer Society invited me to their crime writing festival aboard the Gun, famous train between Darwin and Adelaide, I was hoping for some inspiration for my second book, fiction this time. I needed a break from real people killing each other. Obviously, that didn't pan out. The program is a who's who of crime writing royalty. The debut writer, me. The forensic science writer. The blockbuster writer. The legal thriller writer. The literary writer. The psychological suspense writer. But when one of us is murdered, the remaining authors quickly turn into five detectives. Together, we should know how to solve a crime. Of course, we should also know how to commit one. So it says, Ernest Cunningham returns in a deliciously witty locked room train mystery. So I assume that potentially he is a character in the first book. This definitely is giving me a Agatha Christie vibes here. If you have read Everyone in My Family Has Killed Someone, please comment them below and let me know what you think. I would love to know your thoughts. Is this kind of like a cozy mystery-esque? Because that's the vibe that I'm getting from this one. I'm not sure maybe if it's leaning more towards true cozy mystery or more like Finley Donovan-esque, where maybe there's a little bit of a deeper, more complex side to it. I don't know, but I'm very intrigued and fascinated by this. So this is certainly being added to my TBR for 2024. Also on the 30th, we have a debut thriller called Midnight on Beacon Street by Emily Ruth Verona. And it seems like this is going to be set in the 90s. October 1993. One night, one house, one dead body. When single mom Eleanor Mazinski goes out for a much needed date night, she leaves her two young children, sweet innocent six-year-old Ben and precocious defiant 12-year-old Mira, in the capable hands of their sitter Amy. The quiet 17-year-old is good at looking after children despite her anxiety disorder. She also loves movies, especially horror flicks. Amy likes their predictability. It calms the panic that threatens to overwhelm her. The evening starts out normally enough with games, pizza, and dancing, but as darkness falls, events in this quaint suburban New Jersey house take a terrifying turn. Unexpected visitors at the door, mysterious phone calls and by midnight little Ben is in the kitchen standing
standing in a pool of blood with a dead body at his feet. In this dazzling debut novel, Emily Ruth Verona moves back and forth in time, ratcheting up suspense and tension on every page. Chock full of nods to classic horror films of the 70s and 80s, Midnight on Beacon Street is a gripping thriller full of electrifying twists and a heartwarming tale of fear and devotion that explores our terrors and the links will go to keep our loved ones safe. I am absolutely loving the vibes of this. We're definitely going to have a lot of nostalgia because, first of all, it is set in the 90s, which is definitely my time. And we're also going to have a lot of things harkening back to classic horror films of the 70s and 80s, which I absolutely love. I grew up on those and I loved watching them when I was growing up. So this sounds absolutely fantastic. I am here for it. I'm very excited to check this one out when it comes out. And then we're ending with yet another debut thriller called 27 Minutes by Ashley Tate. The question. For the last 10 years, the small claustrophobic town of West Wilmer has been struggling to understand one thing. Why did it take Grant Dean 27 minutes to call for help on the fateful night of the car accident that took the life of his beloved sister, Phoebe? If he'd called sooner, she might still be alive. The secret. As the anniversary of Phoebe's death approaches, Grant is consumed by memories of that night on the bridge and everything he lost. His future, his reputation, his little sister, and the secret he's been keeping all these years is suffocating him. But he and Phoebe weren't the only ones in the car that night. Becca was there. She knows what happened, and she will do anything to help Grant keep his secret. The truth. Everyone in West Wilmer remembers Phoebe, but only June remembers that another person was lost that night. Her brother Wyatt has been missing for 10 years, and now June is alone. No family, no friends, until someone appears at her door. Someone who may know where Wyatt went all those years ago. Someone who knows what really happened on the bridge that night. Someone who is ready to tell the truth. Taking place over three days and culminating in a shocking twist that will leave you breathless. 27 Minutes is a gripping story about what happens when grief becomes unbearable, dark secrets are unearthed, and the horrifying truth is revealed. Oh my gosh, I love the sound of that one as well. We have some really great thrillers coming out in January, and like I said, a lot of them will also be talked about in the Book of the Month prediction video, so I am here for it. I'm here for all the great thriller releases. A lot of these are certainly being added to my TBR, and I hope that you will add them to your TBR as well. All right, everybody, those are all the January 2024 new releases that I wanted to highlight in this video, but again, this list is not meant to be comprehensive, so if there are any new releases coming out in January that I did not mention here, please feel free to comment that down below so everybody can know and be sure to add those to their TBR as well. Or if you have made it to the end of this video and you're not feeling chatty, go ahead and leave me a train emoji in honor of everyone on this train is a suspect. That is another one that I'm very interested in. Y'all know that I love seeing your comments down below. I very much appreciate the engagement. It certainly helps me and my channel and it helps get these videos out to more potential viewers. And as always, if you like this video or if you just like me, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up. I am participating in Book Miss, meaning from December 1st through December 25th, you should see one video upload a day from me. And if you don't want to miss any of the future content, please be sure to hit that subscribe button as well. Y'all know that I love connecting with you so much in all of these videos or on any of my other social media platforms, which I always leave linked down below along with any books that I may talk about in a video. Until next time, y'all. Bye.